What if I gave $10 to my team to build a business in only three months? Would they be able to find success on eBay as beginners with a new account? That's what we're gonna find out today in this experiment. Since I was eight years old, over 20 years ago, I started reselling cards, games, and more to fuel my collection. And for the last seven years, I've been doing this reselling thing full time and actually moved from a very small apartment with my wife to being able to build this game barn that I'm standing in right now and hiring four of my best friends. My business is beyond blessed, but what if I started over? Are the principles that I built this business on still accurate today? Now I can't really start over with my current knowledge, so I'm having Sky Guy and Brother Dave do it and putting them to the test. They have a little bit of experience buying and selling on eBay, so I'm starting a new account and putting them in charge. Here's what I want answered. One, is it still possible to grow an eBay store starting with only $10 and moving at the speed of cash? Two, how much can they grow by only spending 10 hours per week? And D, can they do it without buying from me or selling to me? <laughs> No, I truly want them in full control, so I had them come up with their own goals and challenges that you'll see in a second. Now, this challenge truly was their experiment, so I'm gonna hand this over to Sky Guy so you can best see how mere beginners started a business with just ten dollars. Thank you, Chase. This entire series is an absolute roller coaster with a lot of questions and nuance that we might not be able to answer here. And it's a three-month-long series that I'm trying to recap in one video, so I definitely encourage you to watch the entire series if this sounds interesting to you. I'm going to link it at the end of this video and in the description. Week one, we get asked a lot. How do you start reselling as a career? In short, you just need to start. With almost everything in life, if you wait for the perfect circumstances to start something, it'll never happen. There will always be one more thing you're waiting for. So the same day we talked with Chase about getting this project started, we got $10 and set our goal. So our goal is to get $5,000 over the next three months. So you need $480 a week of profit. Yeah. It's like $60 a day. That's bold. It's a stretch goal for sure. Oh, you're gonna need equipment too. Yeah, we're gonna need a computer, a light box, a printer, probably other stuff <laughs> at some point. But I think we can start with just our phones. And if we need help, we'll ask the expert. And then the master, maybe, I don't know. What about Matt? Well, Matt's just there. Oh. And then we went off immediately to some garage sales because they have the highest potential to find valuable items for cheap that can really get us a return on our investment. If we can turn our $10 cash into $50 in value, that'd be a great start. At our first sale, we found this pair of golf shoes for free 99 and a Garmin handheld GPS for $5, and it was looking like it was worth at least 100 so we had already shattered our short-term goal. But... It's not cash yet. Our strategy to start is to price things a fair bit below what they commonly sell for on eBay so we can hopefully get a quick sale. While visiting another dozen sales, we noticed an interesting gamble we were taking. Since we only have $5 left, we obviously want to get the biggest return possible, so it would suck if we had $3 left but found an incredible score for $5 and not be able to buy it. So every single purchase mattered, and along the way we had to pass on quite a few things that were still profitable, but not by much. With $2.25 left, we found a Guitar Hero bundle marked at $3 and a universal remote at $1. Since the seller didn't know if it was in working order, we got the guitar and drums for just $2 and with our last quarter, we got the remote. Brother Dave was the one that grabbed this remote and I didn't realize why until we got back to the barn to show Chase and Alex the results of our first trip. Is that a Logitech Harmony? <laughs> Wait, you know about that? Of course I know about that. <laughs> one quarter. In the package? I would have totally passed it up. Brother Dave looked it up. You gotta get better. I, I, so, first find of the day, Garmin. Oh, no brainer. And then all of this stuff was free. Hey, I don't hey. know, this is like thriller, horror, VHS, it's something, we never looked any of these up. And then same with the shoes, this was from this sale. Golf shoes, size 12 Why wide, not? it's kind of obscure. We couldn't Why find not? anything on them. So this guy was 75 cents. This would usually not happen with $10. The fact that you're buying stuff like this and like yes. this yeah. is, is why. Like you're, you're branching out into the garments. Like how many people just walk by that? We find those all the we time. Were, we were probably the 20th person yeah, there. So the so the big neighborhood sale, we only went to 12 sales. Yeah. Did you spend all of your 10? All 10. So we are, we are, go and buy supplies. We are completely out. Like, yeah. And you yeah. have to buy them that day because you got to do same day business I, I, I or know. next day. Yeah. Okay, so David, maybe. now we need to find a place to store it. Okay. Uh, Crap. <laughs> we're, well, we, we have a few right. options, I we'll, guess. We'll use the barn something else. Okay, we'll use the little one. To best replicate the average person that's starting eBay, we found a small little corner to store all of our items. This kind of represents the random closet, basement, or shelf you might have wherever you live. Uh, we have now spent six hours 
combined already. Is that right? Yeah, for this week. So we have so four hours left that I can... That, you, that you're allowed to list. Oh my gosh. So now, you don't need a fancy light box or camera to list on eBay. We will be saving for a light box eventually, but here's the two most important things to consider when taking photos for listings. Good lighting and a solid background. Find a bright window or lamp and take pictures against a table, piece of paper, or whatever else you can find. We'll be using our phones for the listing process because nearly everyone and their grandma has some kind of smart device with a camera and the eBay app makes it easy to list. With Brother Dave almost done listing everything, it was time for the first listing montage. I listed these blue underwater base plates for 50 bucks. And then the Indiana Jones base plate, I listed for 25. And then all of these, I didn't list them. They're pretty much worthless and a waste of our time. And this drill, I listed for 20 bucks. Surprisingly, I'm putting these free shoes up for 20 bucks. And this Guitar Hero lot, I'm putting up for $200. And finally, this Garmin GPS, I'm listing for $130. So we forgot to mention that uh, you also listed the Logitech uh, control or the remote. That's right. For, yep. for 170. Yeah. And now with that, I think we have our total. Yes. So let's let's go tell the guys. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. I'm here with uh, Chase. After. Uh, the right price. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want you to take your prediction on how much enlisted value we got from ten dollars. We only listed seven things. Seven things. Did you list the guitar separately from the drums? Nope, those are together. I'm gonna say you, you probably got like 450. Okay, Matt? I wasn't paying attention. Well, That's fine. I'm gonna guess 520. And the answer is 615 in listed value. Oh There's a lot of knowledge we've learned over the last couple years with eBay with a lot of tips coming from our reselling Discord. So one thing we're gonna do as part of this challenge is we're gonna have to unlock the Discord if we wanna get any advice from Chase or Alex. And with that, we'll get all the other benefits of the Discord. I'll explain what those are, but now it's time for week two, where we're already running into some problems. Week two. In the last episode, we bought seven items with our $10 at yard sales. We listed them all on eBay for over $600 total. The only issue is nobody saw anything. <laughs> David texts me. He's like, dude, we're getting no views. <laughs> Essentially what happened is we listed all of our items at 6 p.m. Friday. Full 24 hours later, zero views. Maybe since we're such a new account, we needed to kind of prove that we weren't bots. So for the first 24 hours, 48 hours, we were just kind of on reserve because you couldn't find our items even when searching for no, them. I searched them. many times yeah, for so a lot of them. After a quick Google search, we figured that's what happened. So come Sunday, we finally started to get views and things felt pretty good. We actually got an offer on one item that we ended up promoting for like 10%. The thing is that was one of our most valuable items, the Logitech Universal Remote. Wait, let's let's grab it actually. Where, where's the, oh, here it is. We listed this for $180 and we got an offer for 140. In my experience, when you get an offer really, really quick on an item, that means it's gonna be a hot item. So David's like, do we accept the offer? Yeah. Cause we need, we're, we're gonna make our money. But I think it's better to just let it sit. You have 24 hours to accept the offer. We let it sit. We ended up selling it full price, $180. Absolutely insane. Did we list it for $170? It was 170. Oh, 170. With our first problem solved, we scheduled a free pickup with USPS. You can also show a QR code at your post office and they can print a label for you or go to the library and print a label for free there. Most people have a printer at home to use already or have other access, but these are just some options in case you don't. And then two days later, we got two more sales. We accepted an offer on the Guitar Hero set and the Indiana Jones Lego base plate. With the money, we were able to order tape, bubble wrap, and a box from U-Haul to ship the Guitar Hero items in. Throughout the challenge, we'll be factoring any extra boxes we have to buy in our shipping costs. So during the next round of sales, we'll be on the lookout for boxes. Facebook Marketplace sometimes has people getting rid of boxes for free too, but we never really thought of that, so learn from our mistakes. Armed with $169 after all of our fees and extra costs, Brother Dave bought access to the Discord and went to garage sales. He bought some Barbies, a buck knife, a fancy hat, and some more. All right, Sky Guy, we're gonna get your reaction. Okay. Okay. This right here was you all know, from one sale. You... Really? Yeah, we went to one sale today. It's very diverse, I like it. Um, Can you guess how much it was? Let's see. There's kind of some big stuff that I wouldn't have expected, honestly. Yeah. Camp stove, what the heck is this? <laughs> Just a fancy, unbranded hat. Oh, oh this is the box for the it? The box for the hat, yep. Okay, Rusty Wallace, Batman Forever McDonald's hat that's signed by Billie Eilish, is that what that is? I, I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> so, Good job, and we still have 
what is that, $55? No, $53? $53.25 left. Let's go. So we got, we have enough to, if we need to buy boxes or anything like that, we have enough to do that. Yeah, that's, that's good. Um, also, we, we definitely need to save for a computer. Yeah, we don't get a computer for a long time, but let's do another listing montage. So that time again, this cowboy hat I listed for $80, and this Tonka truck I'm listing for $25. I listed these NASCAR hats for $25 and $30. I listed every one of these brand new Barbies for $25. And this Coleman camp stove I'm listing for $70. This buck knife wins the day as the highest listed item at $150. I'm liking our inventory. Got everything listed. Took me about two hours and 10 minutes. Skylar's gonna review all of that and hopefully get it scheduled out. Now let's head upstairs and see what the totals were for this week. The total listed value from his pickup was just shy of $505. It's worth noting that this value is just initially what we list everything at. It's likely the majority of items will be sold for less. So this 505 is sort of a projection and may turn out to be $400 by the time it sells due to sending and receiving offers. Week three. This week started off great with five sales. And yes, that's me biting tape because we were too dumb and didn't buy a tape dispenser. We actually unlocked the Discord. We, we spent the $14 to unlock access to the Discord, which means we can ask Alex and the community there a bunch of questions because we have a big goal to achieve. We really do. And I think we need all the help we can get in reviewing our store. Alex. Hello. Hi. Okay, so our goal is $5,000. And we, I think, well, let me show you our, our store so far. We have 10 items listed. We've sold eight for top, top line before everything over $600. So I think our dollars per hour earned is like $5 or something. <laughs> what are some like quick tips that you can give us as far as like getting some just fast cash, other things sold? I would try to get to more of a consistency thing. Okay. When you get one load at a garage sale, don't list it all the same day or next day. Okay. Like, like try to schedule out like one item a day. So later we should go for like seven items maybe so we can list one a day or maybe like 14 so we can list two a day. Is there anything else you recommend we do or we should get? What are like the biggest things that you would kind of shoot for first supplies wise? Yeah, I mean, I think I think a light box would be a, a great investment just because like mm -hmm. the lighting outside is great, but I could see as a buyer thinking, oh, they're not very professional because they don't have okay. equipment. Okay, well, thank you for your time. Are there any Discord channels we should be looking in to kind of further get some help on maybe specifics? We have the eBay reseller channel. Okay. That you should be going in and asking okay. those questions as well. Okay. With some helpful tips from Alpal, we felt confident going into the sourcing side of week three, but he mentioned one of the biggest things for success on eBay, listing consistently. It's one of the top three things you can do and one of the many things we teach in our eBay challenges. During this series, we were actually in the season seven listing challenge in our discord, which ended with hundreds of dollars in prizes to members and hundreds of thousands in everyone's sales. And if you're one of those 400 plus people in the discord, comment what you like about it. But anyway, season eight is beginning in just a few days so in the description i'll have a link to where you can join the discord and if you join for a year we'll discount it so you actually get two months free just know doing the challenge is simple but not easy now the sourcing wasn't really that good we only got a few items worth 10 to 20 bucks or so now that's still good don't get me wrong we just got so lucky with the first week we're finally coming back to reality a bit we spent 40 dollars on this nascar jacket with a potential upside of 100 to 200 dollars but we're going to have this jacket for a while. In fact, I'll probably never mention it again because it, it never sold. But after listing everything and adding $370 in value to the eBay store, we wrapped the week with $149 to spend. Week four. After a decent weekend of sales, that $149 quickly grew to $243.14. Brother Dave took Matt to some sales where they found some decent items, including a sweet watch. We got this sweet N64 Mario watch. It's brand new in box it's got like the, the manual and stuff so seal has a uh, like plastic on it too so yeah that's awesome what's it going for it's like 40 45 bucks and maybe you'll keep it because it's sweet <laughs> just kidding probably not. you're not gonna keep it <laughs> <laughs> after a couple more good buys including some calculators brother dave revealed what he bought whoa yeah, this is sweet dang it that sucks we can't keep it i know <laughs> but uh that's one of the it's hard to see on camera it's like there it is yeah, it's super cool. 15 bucks. So one of the one of the things that I like to note about getting cool like collection pieces or things that you actually want, it's tough 
to sell the things that you want to keep, but sometimes it's worth selling it now so you can continue to roll that money into something much bigger to where you can buy it with actual profit and take home fun money yeah. another time. Chase yeah. has done that with his collection in the past. I know I have as well. Yeah. So just a little encouragement for you guys. It's okay to sell stuff, you can buy it later. So let's continue to snowball our money, ship out what we sold and get these new things listed. But before we get into the listing montage, we need to upgrade and get a light box. Let's get it the cheaper way. Well, now I need to list everything and you guys all know that I've been listing stuff outside for the last couple weeks and I am done with that. And so we're gonna add something to our inventory today. And so I'm at a special place. The Dollar Tree. It's a great spot for people that are on a budget and we are definitely on a budget. So let's go get some poster board in there. Make this a really nice light box. All right, everybody, we're adding a light box for $2.25. Actually, we got a comment recently saying that we should do this instead of buying a full light box, just getting some poster board. And I think that they were very right. $2.25, way better than $80 or $100 that we could spend on a light box. So week five, one month down in the books and we have another problem. We're not really on track at all to hit our $5,000 goal. So I think we have two easy steps to completely turn this around. One, buy more. Two, sell more. It's really simple. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, we really wanna try and get a lot of items this week and then aggressively send offers just like we've been doing. But hopefully we can get enough items to where we can start scheduling more out per day because I really think that consistent impressions is going to get us consistent sales. So I'm really looking forward to that. With a solid couple days of sales and some advice from Al Pal on sending and accepting offers, we had just shy of $400 to work with. Then Brother Dave and Al Pal went to an estate sale, our first and only estate sale of the series. Well, this is an estate sale. There's two houses and nobody's here. So I, it felt like we were just walking into someone's house. This is super cool. Let's, let's go find some stuff. I mean, obviously we are walking into someone's house, but you know what I mean. I know what you mean. <laughs> After David brought all the items back, I took a look and we decided to go through some of the old comics. What would your strategy be? I would put them up for auction. Like this is the one, one of the um, ways we would utilize an auction, like two bucks a piece, put up I an auction. Put it up for what we'd be happy with getting if yeah, it gets one bid. With whatever you're happy with and then okay. there could be a nice one that you end up getting like a skyrocket. Mm -hmm. Is like it smart to still like look it? up just like one random one in the bunch to see like face value? Or yeah, I would, I would look even... up like anything, like an attractive one that looks possibly nice and, and okay. see. But considering no matter what these sell for, even if they sell at the yeah. minimum bid, you're still making good money. This type of purchase is, you don't need to use your time to research. You can let the buyers basically do the research by their bids. Right? Yeah. As long as everything's laid out and pictured, let them decide if there's any key issues or anything crazy. Cool. Save some time. Yeah, that saves us time because I think we only have like, maybe like five hours or so, maybe say, I, I don't know, the time is up here. Uh, we don't have a ton of time left this week and there's a lot more to list. Brother Dave got everything listed and then we ran into our first selling mistake. We bought four calculators earlier, but we listed two with the wrong name and they both sold. But thankfully, one buyer ended up being cool with it and for the other, you'll see shortly. Up until this point, we had $640 in listed value, but with this week's listings, it raised it to 1,402 with only 37 things listed in our store. This was a fantastic feeling, but little did we know that the next week would be our best week yet. Week six, we recapped what week five was like and then showed the only two sales we had over the weekend. We bought this really cool N64 Mario watch for $15 and we just sold it for 60. The box plus the shipping is $4.75. Bought two of these Sony Walkman headphones for a dollar each, just sold one for $24.99. So we have our weekend sales and you see that number right up there. It's actually wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and, and here's why. So last week we uh, we sold a calculator. However, we actually listed it wrong. So we messaged our buyer and said, hey, uh, we put the wrong title in there. It's not this model of calculator. And he started freaking out. <laughs> so, so we had it boxed up and ready to go. Um, but we ended up just sending a refund. And in the process of the weekend to Monday, we sent the refund, but the package that we had boxed up actually still got sent out. 
So we're pretty much out our buy cost and time, which is very valuable. But to learn from our mistakes, we actually jumped on a call with an eBay growth advisor and hopefully they can tell us about our account overall, if it's healthy, what we need to do and maybe not do in the future. David and I do have a little bit of prior eBay knowledge to this series, but we wanna test and see with an actual eBay staff member does that stuff matter? So we asked him, what kind of things can help your eBay store in the algorithm? We talked for about 30 minutes and ultimately what we found was that everything we recommend to do in the eBay challenge is pretty much great for the algorithm with the biggest thing being consistency on every front of the platform. If you wanna know more about what they told us, we're actually gonna be doing a live call about the season eight challenge in our Discord very soon. But now to some sales. All right, so to make up for our loss, we need to go out and buy some more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and actually the American Pick sale is happening again this week and they said they bring more stuff out so we got to go back there and see if we can find some more stuff well uh he's not open i guess so that place just really didn't pan out the best so now we're just gonna go free pick some garage sales okay so this is kind of our first garage sale that we've actually been to that's been successful um there's a lot of like military type gear whether it's like actual uh u.s issued or not and there's like a there's like survival shovels and stuff like in the trailer but i think there's also some knives that we might be able to look at like buck knives so we should probably look into those a little bit more this turned everything around we spent an hour here together it's crazy. Just, just look in the bags like there's more than just a water bottle we've got knives like if there's one thing I learned on the main channel from Hobby Shop Ron, a knives sell. So. so let's look at everything back at the barn, but this could be, would you say the best garage sale day yet? I would say it's the best, the best garage sale day we spent, for sure. We spent $295. So let me say we started every place we went, either there wasn't a sale or there was nothing there. And it, we, we just went to one more yeah. and just really scored. So this is super I'm, exciting. I'm excited. Let's get this listed. Kinds, I couldn't find this exact one for like, 100 150 160 that's huge so, my um, suggestion would be so a couple things to note when listing pocket knives especially in used condition um note that it has good snap if it that's, does that's good snap so that was right good there, snap there. and you got to check that here, with here, every blade listen, listen to this oh baby. that's nice that's that's, that's a huge I mean, that adds a lot of value. People want that. And then for the main picture, make sure to take out every blade. It looks like that's a four blade. After discussing some more strategy about knives, we found that we had 36 items here, enough to list and schedule out five items per day for a full week. But why is this important? You see, based on the data we've seen, listing daily helps your store and the algorithm. But if you list five per day, based on what we've seen, you get an even bigger boost. But what's all here? And why is it so special? I'm listing this Swiss Army knife for 30 and this one for 75. And I listed these Spyderco Clippy tools for $35 each. I listed this brand new Gerber mini tool for 50. Then I listed this lot of five Apinel knives for $100. Then this single Apinel knife for $20. I listed this M2 saber tool for 30 and this M4 saber tool for 100. This leather stropping hone for $13. This buck knife box and papers for 20. This buck knife for 75. This uncommon case knife we put up for auctions starting at 100. This K-Bar knife for $80. This Leatherman knife for 30 and this Leatherman multi-tool for 50. This Havilon knife with extra blades for 30. This brand new sharpener for 20. Then these little guys for 50, 20, and 12. Then these pocket knives for 70 and 100. This water bottle for 40. Then everything that came in this box we were able to piece out for 10, 10, 10, 13, and 30. And then our biggest listings of the day, this Leatherman Wave multi-tool for $225 and this even older Leatherman multi-tool for $250. We paid 20 for this and five for this, making this an absolutely amazing score. With another listing montage down and about $180 in the bank, we realized our Discord membership was about to expire. So we subscribed for the year in hopes that maybe we can make some connections in there for future potential buys or trades. Week seven. We're halfway through the challenge and it's worth mentioning that brother Dave has slowly grown a large fan base. He's the real MVP of the series. It's, it's pretty much been his full-time project. So subscribe and comment to show your appreciation for him. Anyways, we have $38 at this point and we had a great weekend of sales, including the very first item we bought. Then we made a purchase from a local connection where we got some games and other electronics. And it's at this point I realized something big. We've been trying to teach how to start from basically nothing, but there is a smarter way to get started. Connections are one of the most important things you can have in any business, so if you want to try this challenge, you could actually get a huge jump start 
by just asking family and friends. Now, everyone has varying advantages with the connections that they already have in their lives, so ask a family member if you can take or buy something that they don't use anymore and get started that way. Or even better, I guarantee you have at least three things in your house right now that you can get rid of to get started. So I encourage you to use the resources you have around you already, and I guarantee you'll grow even faster. With this in mind, Brother Dave actually found out that a family member was having a yard sale, so he decided to go and ask for games. Could you do 125 for it? Just do it. Okay. Yeah, that'd cool. be great. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. We got some you stuff. brought me into the heat. That's you better right. have good stuff. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, ooh, games. Games. That's another drop. Our spot. first. <laughs> we got that for free, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Wow. Are these bowling shoes? That, this is some, with this, bowling balls. Yeah. So we got actually all of this, this from my a lot of games. from a cousin that I had no idea was doing a sale. We just happened like I knew they were okay. in the neighborhood, but they were doing a sale and he had a bunch of games and these bowling balls, and uh, we got all of the games for I believe what was it 125 dollars, and then we got these okay uh, the, all of this stuff for um, for 30 yeah, and, 30. and he threw in this bag too. Are, are there any like heavy hitter games or that's, you know, a, that's I, a lot of money for I know, just filler? I know, but so we, we're, we're gonna have to do some- That's not a mean. That's <laughs> a lot of money if it's filler, yeah, David. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, you know, I wanted I wanted to, to be, my, fair. My, be fair with my cousin especially, so. That's so funny. Definitely a lot Ooh, of listings. Ape Escape. Yeah. Sounds good. I, I really didn't look through all of them, so. but GameCube? There, there's a GameCube in here. He didn't know if it worked, it might with not. With the wave? Oh, it's a fake. But it also has this guy, blockhead? which is cool. Okay, it's a smashing success. <laughs> just with this. We want to try and keep our minimum listed price to like $10 plus shipping, just for it to be worth our time. That also being said, we need inventory right now. We have a lot of big stuff this week, but not a lot of quantity, especially if we're gonna keep up with doing five listings a day. Right, this is gonna help a lot. And after listing everything, we were able to buy a tape gun and get our total listed value to $4,400. But it was at this point, we realized how massive our $5,000 profit goal was. We might need to change it. Week eight. After a solid weekend of sales, we had $555 in cash to spend and not a lot of time. We weren't able to list everything from week seven yet, so we had to finish that still in our 10 hour time limit. So we're definitely gonna be eating into our sourcing time. So we decided to change up our strategy a bit and go to a local pawn shop where our goal was to make a connection and hopefully get some deals. We've been here before on the main channel, but here's some tips for making deals at pawn shops. All right, so we have Godzilla, Godzilla, Godzilla the Tiger, Final Fantasy Godzilla, Star Wars Godzilla, and Wario 2. Our listed value for the week was $490, bringing our total listed value to $4,616 with $447 in cash to work with. But earlier I mentioned that we might need to change our goal, and with the numbers we had, we needed Chase's thoughts. Week 9. Chase! That's the right answer. Okay, Chase. So. Yes. As I've been saying in every single episode so far, our goal has been to get $5,000 in profit and all the supplies we need for our business. I'm starting to realize we didn't understand what profit meant. I think our actual profit is like, it's around 30%, maybe 35% of our, of our sales. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, of top, top line sales before factoring out fees and everything, yeah, like 35, 40% is realistic. You know, a lot of people would mention you also would have to factor in paying taxes, but yes. we're talking about net profit being the goal, so yep. taxable income yep. uh, of 5,000. And, and in three months, starting from zero, <laughs> you do kind of have to have like close to 15,000 in sales. Total sales after fees is 1,900. Yeah, I mean, that, that's um, and, incredible. And that's that's not including like our reinvested buy cost because that's the other thing. We're reinvesting yeah. everything. Moving forward, what do you think we should do? We have four hundred and forty-seven dollars in the bank. Like if we sell everything today, we might have twenty-five hundred in hand. I, I think the the heart of this series was mm -hmm. to start a real business with ten dollars. Mm -hmm. So if that's the goal. In my opinion, it makes sense 
to shift that to like just get as much in sales as you possibly can in this in this mm -hmm. period and much as much enlisted value mm -hmm. so that you have a real business after three months mm -hmm. of intentionally working towards it because I, I still want to keep a high goal like one of the things that we encourage people in the discord and we and we've talked about briefly in the series is like set a higher goal because if you set like if you set the bar really low you're not going to push yourselves and yeah. David, we've been hustling. Yeah. <laughs> so like, should we try and do like 5,000 still in like after fees sales? Yeah, I think that's a great goal. With a new more wise goal of $5,000 in sales after fees, we shipped out some more stuff that sold and took $775 in the bank to some garage sales. Brother Dave killed it at sales. Brother Dave killed it at sales, got my brain dead opinion, and all we had left to do was list everything. I'm starting with the highest listed item being this fish finder that I'm listing for $260. I'm listing this Garmin for $170. I'm listing this insect fogger that's most definitely not new for $60. And these untested Cobra CB radios, I'm listing for $30. I'm listing this sealed box of NBA hoops for $55. And I'm listing this butterfly paper punch for $10. I think this is the first time I've actually bought stamps at a garage sale, but we're listing all of these stamps in a lot for $40. I'm listing this hummingbird fish finder for $45 without batteries. And I actually replaced those batteries and put it in this hummingbird and am listing this guy for 60. Doesn't really matter for this montage, but still very cool. I was super surprised by these guys. Neither of them work, but we're listing the Wii at 20 and this Nomad Jukebox at 30. I'm listing all of these items that we actually got at the exact same sale for 60, 40, and 25. And I listed these super uncomfortable Sony cordless headphones for $30. Seriously, they're, they're very uncomfortable. I, I tried them out. I would not recommend them. Sadly, I'm not listing these Geneva watches for $150, but I am asking 20 for them. And lastly, I'm listing this Lionel train set for $70. Oh, and I'm listing all of this stuff from two weeks ago for $24, $20, and $40 for that lot. So now we're gonna go over the totals, but after that, there's a few things that we have to do. And uh, cause we made Chase kind of mad. <laughs> so our final sales after fees are still $2,237.60. Our current cash in hand is $561 and some change. I am feeling great about that. Uh, Chase sent us a text last night saying for, <laughs> for his health, we need, to, uh, we need to do better in here. So we committed to buying a storage shelf, and with that, we wrapped this week with $455 in our pocket and almost 5,200 enlisted value. Week 10. With only a couple of weeks left, we were less than halfway to our goal, which means we need 2,700 more dollars in less than four weeks. But with a great weekend of sales, we wound up with over $1,000 in cash and 2,800 in sales after fees. Brother Dave loaded up a fanny pack with cash and took Chase out to hopefully get some good scores. They bought this Wii bundle, a wall thermometer thing, and then some great electronics and a Nickelodeon jacket. He brought his massive haul back, I tried everything on, and then he showed me a massive find. You're looking like here, big lot? this okay. whole, all this camera stuff, 15 bucks, look inside. Yeah, that's the one. That's the camera right there. That's the one to look for. Canon AE1, the program the model. Program model. Okay. Yeah, and it has the original I think uh, 50 millimeter. There it is. Yeah. Canon 50 millimeter. You're everything, right. everything is there. Wow. It's it's super nice. I tested this guy already. It works. Heck like, yeah. We finished with $5,683 in listed value and still over $800 in cash and prepared ourselves for the final three weeks. Week 11. We do our normal goofy intro. And then we get our cash in hand to $1,200 in sales after fees to $3,220. After talking to Alpal and asking how we were doing, we came to the conclusion that we simply needed more inventory. Over this entire series, we actually had 10 hours total that we didn't use. So the comments section gave us approval to do a 20 hour week to make up for it. Um, but we also are going to need 35 items minimum this week. Yeah. Five times seven, that's 35. 35, yeah, <laughs> and I think we should actually push it up to 50. 
Give us a cushion. You know? I, I think that is definitely very possible because there is a town-wide sale this week. Yeah. Um, and you're going to need all the time you can. So I think that makes sense to me. 50 items is going to need a lot of listing time as well. So uh, I'm not going to be able to be with you guys, though because Jason and I have to film a different video. So okay. the best of luck to you and so Alpal. Just be an Alpal. Yeah. Have fun. Thanks. Get out. Go. He just rides that all day. Then Brother Dave found one of the best items of the entire series. The only thing was, he didn't even know it. Something that I'm interested in for sure. Yeah, yeah that's super cool. Mind there? if I open it up? Uh -huh. Ooh, it to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And after a long day of sales, Brother Dave wasn't able to get the 50 item goal, which was definitely unfortunate if we were going to keep listing as much as we wanted. But Brother Dave showed me that he got an Intellivision and valued it around $120 or so. What we didn't know was that this was the Intellivision Super Pro, a relatively rare find complete in box, which we later saw was valued in price charting for $550. And the only listing on eBay was for over 600. Also, the Super Pro games are also really valuable, so look out for those. Anyways, it was a great win, but we still didn't have a high quantity of items. Or so David thought. Since we had 20 hours this week to use, I went out with Chase to film a video, but I was able to sneak in a big purchase of my own. So those were some really good items. How many were you able to get total? So we got 25. Okay. Which is not quite to our 50, but halfway. I was pretty happy with it, but yeah. And I did get some stuff. You did. Not just some stuff, but like over 20 things. I got a couple dozen Star Wars figures from a local toy seller. Now the values were all over the place, but it was a very safe risk to take. I spent a bit under $500, another risk because I had no idea how much David would be buying. Thankfully, we didn't break the bank and break a rule. We finished the day by organizing everything we have so far on the shelf we bought and got some more bubble wrap and tape because we were running low, bringing our cash in hand to $463 and our total listed value was over $8,000. Our total sales after all fees, $3,220. Only two weeks to go and $1,800 in after fees sales to get. Oh boy. Week 12. With the Brother Dave fandom stronger than ever and the series continuing to grow in popularity, we needed some strong wins if we were going to finish the series strong and hit our goal. Our weekend sales were really great since we sent a lot of offers, but we had a couple things get returned and a couple other items lost in the mail. We were back to over $1,000 in cash and hit $3,730 in sales after fees. So to make sure we had enough to hit our goal, we needed to keep listing. So to get more listings, we invited the toy seller we got the Star Wars stuff from over to the barn to hopefully secure a deal on some stuff that didn't sell at his yard sale. He brought a bunch of DC figures and some various Street Fighter figures. Now this was the quantity of stuff we needed. But there were a couple of problems. The first problem, about a hundred of these DC figures were less than $30, meaning we'd have to pay pretty low in order to make some profit. The problem along with that is in order to maximize our profits, we'd have to list each item individually. And these were hard to look up. And since our time is valuable, it'd take too long to list each item for only a few bucks profit, especially since we only have 10 hours to work with. And then the final problem, say we did list everything individually and be able to do it quick. In order to get closer to our goal, we'd still have to rely on everything selling within a week. And these just aren't items that are flying off the shelves. To put it in perspective, let me ask you this. Would you rather spend $50 on one item and make $100 after it sells in a week, or spend $50 on 10 items and make your $100, but it takes four weeks for them all to sell? There's different strategies to maximizing your inventory, so here's what we did. We bought all 125 or so figures for $635, with the Street Fighter figures being worth about $600 and everything else being worth about $1,700. And again, that sounds great, but we don't have the time to maximize and get that. So we decided to pass this deal along to someone else. We kept the Street Fighter figures because they were easier to list and sold everything else for $600 to a Discord member to get our cash back. This member will be able to maximize on everything better than we can, and there's still plenty of money to be made after they put the work in. But since this wasn't on eBay, we're not counting this $600 towards our total sales goal. 
but now at least we had some more cash to work with and hopefully get some higher end inventory to sell. And after some more great sales, we were back to $1,500 in cash and brother Dave went out sourcing, hopeful for some more scores. And man, he did great. <laughs> Here it is. Is it a Sony Handycam? It's a Sony Handycam, Brother Dave. Yes, I know. <laughs> it's beautiful. It is beautiful. And it has the cords too. Yes. My goodness. Hopefully it works. And then you got a crash dummy. Yes. Wait, yeah. is that another Sony Handycam? It's another one. <laughs> we, got, uh, we got that and something else right there. Is it another Sony Handicap? <laughs> what is this an AE1? AE1. We got so we got that and the that other Sony Handicam for $90. You got like the best cameras and camcorders to look for. I know. I know. And then we got a crash dummy. That's right. It works. It works. It works. <laughs> Brother Day. There's so many. <laughs> They're Tommy. Yeah. Whoa. Guess how much we got this bag for? Five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> now this is again, some good quantity of items, but because the buy cost was so low on everything, it made a bit more sense to maximize here. Even the plushies ended up being worth a lot of money and were much easier to list than all the action figures would have been because all the info on them was right on the tag. The 60 or so we spent on all the plushies turned into over $900 in listed value, bringing our total listed value in our store to almost $8,500. But more importantly, after our sales for the week, we had 4,336 in sales after fees. If we're going off that number with the amount of hours we've spent, that's an hourly rate of over $36. But now, week 13, the final week. To kick off the finale, we recount on how just a couple short months ago, we had $100 in a few sales under our belt. And now, we were buying the last couple items we need to start a business. Well, except for a table. We never did get that. But even after buying a computer and a printer, we had $1,000 to spend. Not even including what's all about to sell. So for this week, we were hoping to spend a lot of money with a connection we made that apparently had a large Lego and action figure collection. We made some sales at the beginning of the week, got some closing thoughts from Chase on how we were doing, and Alpal even told us what our worst and best buys were of the series. But we were still over $500 away from our goal, so we set up a large sale on our eBay store. Can you show me how to do a sale real quick? Sure. On store? All right, Skylar, so now we're at the point where you need to decide what discount to give and what items to give it for. Because we might lose money on some items if we do this. <laughs> we might. I, have, I haven't talked to Brother Dave either, but I think 25% off everything. Looking to Chase also while he's going through Pokemon cards. What do you think, Mr. Mr. Boss Man? Sure. <laughs> I think that's a good number. That's not normally the smartest thing to do, unless if you're liquidating your inventory, but we need to know our sales after fees and cash flow is the most important thing. So with the sale running, we prayed that we'd get some sales so we can buy big. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived at the place where hopefully I can buy some Legos, Lego, and some action figures. And if we look inside of this, this is the shed. Oh my goodness. Look at all of this. And it, look at that. All the pieces are organized. I feel so sad Brother Dave can't be here. But let's take a look at everything. <laughs> like there's an entire city here and I can kind of pick and choose what I want. Some of the stuff is the owner's kids. So obviously I'm probably not gonna take anything from here. There's a bunch of base plates that might be worth buying. You can sell those, all of these. Now there's a mixture of sealed stuff and complete. Like man, Aqua Raiders, that brings me back. But all of this is pretty much on the table. Um, I think we can look through those bins potentially. And then all of this, there's even stuff up there. I really don't know where to begin. 
So after coming up with a plan, I started grabbing things that would sell quick and were worth a decent amount of money. I wrote down the value of everything I wanted as I put it on the table so we could figure out a fair price to pay. And on top of that, there was a box of G.I. Joe and He-Man that I bought for $500 and some older D&D books and minis for $50. Alright guys, this is the stack. Chase, how much am I paying? Well, you're paying like basically 850 bucks. Okay. Plus the 500 inside and plus... Plus 50 for the Dungeons and Dragons stuff. Yes. So, so you're paying 1400 bucks total. Man, I have more money to spend, but that's okay. <laughs> Now at this point, I knew I had over $1,400 because Brother Dave called me and told me exactly what we were working with after some sales. And man, we were looking good. With only four days left before the end of the challenge, we listed everything and posted it over the course of two days instead of continuing to schedule out five per day. We were hoping that our formula would work where if we post a ton more, we'd get a ton more impressions, therefore a ton more in sales over the weekend. We listed these Pikachu plushies for 20, and we these Gen 3 starters for 40, and these little plushies for 50. We all this a while back and never showed it. Go figure. We're listing this for 15, these each for 20, and this one for 25. And after getting everything listed, we asked you guys what goals or challenges we should have if we were to continue with this challenge. If you watch this whole series and have any thoughts, let us know in the comments. But now, there's nothing else we have time to do. It all comes down to one more weekend of sales. And before we get to the final numbers, this journey wouldn't have been possible without eBay. They enjoyed this idea so much that they actually sponsored this entire series and this video. So huge thank you to them. They're an essential part of our business, and if you look back on the history of our channel, you see they've been there all along the way. We officially have everything sold and sent off. The final bit of this series is <laughs> finally coming to an end. We have everything laid out right here, but before I show you and the whole crew what we have exactly, our final eBay sales total after fees. We did $6,378. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? $79. That's crazy. Uh, all on 132 hours of time. We may have spent an extra uh, two hours this week. We still have $1,600 of spending money left, which is absolutely nuts. I guess we did something right there. But now, let's grab the guys. All right, boys. You we started with just $10. We got over $6,000 in sales. We still have over $1,600 in cash. But in addition to that, we still have everything you're about to see right here. Oh my gosh. Wow. Wow. Brothers, you started a business. This is over $11,000 in listed inventory still. <laughs> like I said in the beginning, if you wait for the perfect circumstances to start something, it will never happen. Our hope is that this journey can show you what's possible in a short amount of time if you just get started. I encourage you to watch the full series. The, the response in the community has been amazing. People have been starting this challenge with their children, using it to get out of debt, pay off homes, and so much more. If you like this video, consider subscribing. If not, I thank you for watching this far, and we'll see you in the 100,000 subscribers special. Oh, and as I finish recording this, the Intellivision just sold. Great job, Brother Dave.